Hey everyone, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to delete documents from a collection or drop entire collections using the Go programming language. So this is another tutorial in my quick start series. So this would be the final operation when it comes to CRUD. So we already saw how to create, retrieve, update, and now we are going to be worrying about delete. So this is all part of the quick start getting started tutorial series when it comes to getting started with MongoDB and the Go programming language. So you'll notice that on my screen, I do have MongoDB Atlas up. So this is the cloud version of MongoDB. This is going to be the basis of what we're using for this particular tutorial. The expectation is that you already do have a cluster created and configured so that way you can do remote development on your local machine. So that means having the appropriate whitelists available to you. Now, if I go into my code editor, You'll also notice that I do have some very basic code added. So this is Visual Studio Code. I do have all of the connection information available. So this is something we explored in one of the earlier tutorials. So this basically what it says is we're connecting to a MongoDB cluster, in this case, Atlas, and we are getting a handle to our database and a collection. So if I look at the particular version of MongoDB, so the MongoDB Go driver, I can go to my gopackage.toml file, and we're going to be using version 1.1.3 for this particular example. You can go ahead and use a more modern version if you want, but things might be a little different between this tutorial and what you see in terms of your own Go driver. Now let's go back into our web browser. So we're going to look into MongoDB Atlas for just a moment. We're going to be looking at collections. And you'll notice that I do have a quick start database and an episodes collection as well as a podcast collection. These collections were created in a previous tutorial, and we're going to be worrying about deleting particular documents from these collections as well as dropping them entirely. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and add some code that'll make these deletes possible. So first of all, rather than deleting from the podcast collection, let's go ahead and change this to episodes because we know we do have an episodes collection. Next up, what we want to do is we want to do a delete operation. So we have the option of deleting one document or deleting multiple documents. And all of this can be decided based on a filter as well. So let's go ahead and say result error equals episodes collection dot delete one. So what we're going to say is we're going to say context. So this is the context that we defined on line 18 as part of our figuring out how long it should take before we time out of any given operation. We have a filter. So we're going to say BSON M. And for this particular example, let's go ahead and provide a duration. So this will be an equality filter. So that means that we're going to be matching on a particular field rather than saying uh, a range or something similar. So we're going to say in this case, let's go ahead and say duration. And let's go ahead and say maybe 25. Because if we look back in our web browser, we can go to Google Chrome, we can look at our episodes, we say that we have a duration of 25 for one of our documents and a duration of 32 for another one of our documents. So let's go ahead and go back into our code editor. We'll notice that it is uh, highlighting for us that there's a problem because we're not using the variables that we've defined, but we will in just a moment. So now that we did a delete one operation, what we can say is we can say if error not equal to nil. And if there is an error, meaning that it's not nil, we're just going to say log.fatal and we're going to say error. So we're basically going to print out that error and then exit out of the application. Otherwise, what we're going to say is we're going to say, let's print out what whatever our delete resulted with. So we're going to say fmt.printf. We're going to say delete one removed and then a value documents. And in this case, uh, it's, it's only ever going to be one document because it's a delete one operation. But I'm going to, I'm going to leave that in anyways. So we're going to say result dot deleted count and we're going to save it. So let's go ahead and test this out. We're going to test out to see if it actually deletes one document. It should always delete one document because we only have one that has a value of 25 for duration, but let's go ahead and run it anyways. So we're going to say go run main.go. And you can see that it says that it removed 
one document. So that's as expected because this is a delete one operation. So if we go back in Atlas and refresh, it should reflect the new documents that are currently residing in our database. So if you look at episodes, that episode with a duration of 25 is now gone. So let's go ahead and maybe clone this document right here. We're going to go ahead and leave the duration of 32. So we're going to insert it. So we have two documents that are exactly the same. We're doing this because we're now we're going to worry about doing a delete many operation. So what we're going to say is we're going to delete multiple documents and we're going to base it off of the duration. Again, we're just going to say the duration is going to be 32, but instead of deleting just one of these documents, it should delete both of these documents. So we're going to say visual studio code. We're going to change our code just slightly. Um, so this time around, what we're going to say is we're going to actually maybe co comment this out just so that way uh, it's there and we can look back at it, but we're going to say result or error equals episodes collection dot delete many. We're going to provide that context again, and we're going to provide the criteria for deleting multiple documents. So we're going to say bson dot m. We're going to say maybe duration again, and we're going to say duration this time is 32. If error is not equal to null, or if it's not equal to nil, that means that there was a problem and we're going to print out the error and terminate our application. Otherwise, it was successful, so we're going to say fmt.printf, we're going to say delete many, we're going to say maybe removed the value, so we're going to say documents, and this time around it should delete uh, zero or more documents. So if, if nothing matched this particular criteria, so if there were no documents that had a duration of 32, uh, of course it would be zero documents deleted, but then there could be one or there could be multiple as well. So we're going to say result dot deleted count and we're going to save it. So I'm going to run it. I'm going to say go run main dot go. And this time around it deleted two documents because that was it as expected. If I go back into Atlas and I refresh, you'll notice that this particular collection has no documents in it. So we just saw a delete one as well as a delete many. Now what we're going to see is, well, what happens if we want to delete a collection and everything inside of it? So that means we're going to delete the collection. We're going to delete the documents. We're going to delete the meta information. We're going to delete the indexes. Whereas when we did the delete one or delete many, we only deleted the documents inside of them. So we're going to delete this podcast collection. So we're going to drop it completely. So let's go ahead and go back into our Visual Studio code or whatever IDE that you're using. I'm going to comment out this code. This time around, maybe what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that this is a podcast collection. Even though we could just drop the episodes collection, we're going to say podcasts. And we're going to add the following code. We're going to say if error equals podcast collection dot drop context. And we're going to say error not equal to nil. And we're going to print out that error if it exists. So we're going to say log dot fatal and we're going to say error. Otherwise the collection was dropped. We don't need to know how many documents were deleted. We don't need to know how many indexes were deleted. It's just going to delete and we're going to move on with our business. Otherwise there was an error and we're going to print it out. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm going to say clear on the terminal. I'm going to say go run main.go. It didn't print out any errors. So if I go into Google Chrome and I refresh that podcast collection should be gone. And it is. So that sums up everything that I wanted to prove in this particular tutorial. Just as a recap, what we saw is we saw delete one, which would delete one document based on a filter. We also saw delete many, which behaves similarly, but instead of deleting one document, you have the option to delete more than that in a single operation. Or we have the option to drop an entire collection and that includes all documents, all meta information and all index data. So when it comes to the quick start series, there are a few more things that I want to demonstrate when it comes to getting started with Go and MongoDB. For example, I wanted to explore mapping BSON documents to native Go data structures. I wanted to explore the aggregation framework as well as transactions and change streams. So there's quite a few things that we want to cover still, and it's all related to getting started with MongoDB and Go.